So now the question is, how do we calculate that broken blue line, that approximation to the red curve? We just sketched it out geometrically, but now the question is, how do we actually calculate it? So let's draw our state space, as usual. And let's take the point x0, y0, which is right there. And let's consider the change vector x0 prime, y0 prime, which is that. Now, of course, when I say that that's the change vector x0 prime, y0 prime, I should be a little bit careful because I'm drawing the change vector on state space. The units of state space, if this is sharks and tuna, then x is in sharks and y is in tuna. But the change arrow, and we talked about this when we d first developed the concept of the change vector, the units of the change vector are not sharks and tuna. The units of the change vector are sharks per unit time and tuna per unit time. Those are changes. Those are velocities, as it were. And you really can't put these units onto that space. The units don't agree. So what I am drawing here is not literally x0 prime, y0 prime, because I couldn't draw it on that space. What I am drawing here is x0 prime, y0 prime, times delta t equals 1. And the delta t here has the units of time, and this has the units of animals per time. And so the product of delta t and x0 prime, y0 prime, that is indeed a vector that is going to give us another and I shouldn't say x0, y0. I should say that's going to give us another vector, x1, y1, which is what we get if we follow this change vector for a whole one unit, if delta t equals 1. But we're not going to do that, we said. Instead, we're going to follow the change arrow for a very short time which amounts to saying delta t much less than 1. Let's say it's 0.01 in this case. And so our new change vector here is the change vector x0 prime, y0 prime times delta t, or x0 prime, y0 prime times 0.01. And that is that little blue arrow right here. So now we are at a new point, And at the new point, we consult the change vectors again. And let's say the change vector happened to be going in that direction. Then again, we multiply the change arrow by our delta t, which is our dt, as it's sometimes called. We multiply it by a delta t of 0.01, and we get a short little arrow. And as we said, that's Euler's method. Now, let's talk about what that looks like as algebra, how we actually do this computation. So for our very first example, let's not even deal with a 2D system. Let's deal with a very simple 1D system, like logistic growth. You remember x prime equals bx times 1 minus x over k, where k is the carrying capacity. And this system, as we saw, 
has a trajectory that looks like that, where this is x equals k. It approaches equilibrium at the carrying capacity. And now we're just going to start from a random point there, call it x0, and we want to approximate the trajectory forward from that point. So we're going to do it as a spreadsheet. And the first uh, column in the spreadsheet is going to be your location. The Second column is going to be the change vector at that point. The third column is going to be the change vector at that point times your little time step delta t. The fourth column we are now going to take x and we're going to add to it. We're going to take column 1 plus column 3. It's going to be x plus x prime times delta t. And then that is going to be your next x. So we're going to begin at x0. At x0, we have calc go to the vector field and calculate x0 prime. Then we have x0 prime times delta t. And then we have x0 plus x0 prime times delta t. And that is x1. Then we calculate x1 prime by going, plugging x1 back into the formula. Then we calculate x1 prime times delta t, and then we add that to x1, x1 plus x1 prime times delta t, and this becomes x2. And in that way, we generate a sequence of finite steps, x0, x1, x2, and those are these points in the Euler approximation. So to be totally complete, I should really put in a first column, which is t. And the first column of t is at t0, and now at 1 delta t is x1. At 2 delta t, we have value x2 and so on, and we generate recursively, plugging each new result back into the formula to get the next one, we generate a sequence of points that is Euler's method approximation to the red curve. So this is Euler's method, and we're going to use it to approximate this trajectory the blue broken line. I don't know if you saw the movie Hidden Figures, which I highly recommend, but there's a wonderful moment where uh, Katherine Johnson, played by Taraji P. Hansen, uh, she is tr they're trying to solve the trajectory of the moonshot, and it's a bunch of nonlinear equations, and they can't come up with a solution. And there's this great scene where Henson looks up in the sky and says, Euler's method. Everybody says, Euler's method. And she says, yes, Euler's method. And that, indeed, that's correct. That's accurate. And by the way, if you look in the movie, she actually opens to a textbook that actually correctly states Euler's method. Uh, so they got that right. Uh, what Katherine Johnson did to put the space shot on the moon was an Euler's method approximation to the equations, Newton's equations, for the projectile. And as she said, we just needed to aim a bullet such that three days later, when the bullet arrived at a certain distance, the moon was right there. 
So that's a little understatement of the technical difficulty, but it was done with Euler's method. The movie is correct about that. So let's actually do an example just to show you how this calculation actually works. So I'm going to take a one-dimensional example here. And I put in, instead of using an abstract B and a K, I put in actual numbers for those, which you have to do to get a definite equation. And now I have to also pick an initial condition there. So at time zero, my initial condition, which is going to be x zero, oh, let's say x is 10. Okay, now for x equals 10, what is x prime? Well, it's 0.2 times 10 times 1 minus 10 over 100. That's 2 times 0.9, which is 0.18. So now, we have x prime is 0.18. Now, now we have to choose a delta t. And I'm going to choose a delta t of 0.1. So now x prime for this point times delta t becomes 0.18 times 0.1 or 0.018. And now the new value, which is x plus x prime times delta t, is 10 plus 0.018, or 10.018. And now this is x1. And so at the time 1 delta t, we now have our new x value. Our new x value is 10. 0.018. Now what I have to do is I have to take 10.018, plug it into for x in the change equation, and get a new value of x prime. And I certainly cannot do that in my head standing here. So you will just have to imagine that I have successfully plugged x equals 10.018 into the change equation, gotten the new change vector, and then pulled it down here. And that is the new change at the time 2 delta t. And in that way, we generate a sequence of states. And these x's are the successive points that determine Euler's approximation to the red curve.